<laughs> okay, so we're solving trig functions, yes, or trig equations, but just today we have a little more pizzazz in our problems. Well, we got some. Somebody has a no, you don't die from pizzazz. Okay, we're well, actually, we're this morning I asked them if they wanted the ultimate problem. First, um, they wanted it first. Yeah. There is an ultimate problem. Well, like the that way I actually understand it. Uh, and it has a relationship to the square root. It's not exactly. Yeah, right. Well, kind of. We'll, we'll see here what you think. So, yes, this is an ultimate problem. It has, does have many characteristics of our ultimate from before. I don't like that color. <laughs> All right. Looks like yesterday. Nothing too fantastically different. Has a sign in it, a cosine in it. Why can't we just solve it? Yes. There is a one on that side. It is not set equal to zero. Excuse me. I'm talking. You're not. So, can't? Why can't I just set it equal to zero and solve it? Well, I can make it equal to zero. Okay. Because can you solve this sine and cosine in the same problem here? That's no. The crap on the is there a? <laughs> it just looks small. It doesn't look like it would be that big a step. <laughs> it's a, you'll be surprised. But no, yeah, it looks pretty basic. Not that big a deal, but it is going to be a touch challenging. Okay, how? What's the only identity you have that will change sine into cosine or vice versa? Yeah. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So. Our only chance is if we get those that sine and that cosine, from one of them at least, has to get squared somehow. So, okay, Eli says square all of it. What do you mean by square all of it? Can I just go square each one separately? Square, square, square? No, we know that's illegal. Multiply the whole thing by sine or cosine. That's interesting. That's a unique idea. But if <laughs> never heard that one before, no. But then you're gonna have a term with a sine times cosine in it. Yeah, you probably don't want that. We do want to get it squared. You remember on algebra said it a minute ago on the ultimate problems from algebra two that had two square roots in them. You had to isolate one of them. You do not want to square when both of them are on the same side because you're squaring whole side. If we square the left side right now, we will have to foil the left side together. We don't want to spoil the sine and the cosine together. So we need to move one of them. Do you care which one? Yeah, move the cosine. Okay. Okay, so we're going to have two sine equals one minus two times cosine of x. Okay. Once you get them separated and isolated, then yes, you wish to square both sides. Oh, uh, this is probably a 12 to 15 point problem. It's about the same as your last ultimate problem, really. Uh, you'll get the hang of it, just don't make silly mistakes here. Because in a minute, it's just going to become the problems you've been solving on your last assignment. Okay, if I square the left side, that's not that big a deal. I'll get 4 sine squared. But, how do I square the right side? You we are foiling this baby. Do I need to write it out? One minus two cosine times one minus two cosine? Okay. So, yes, you are foiling this because it means take it times itself. So if I foil that, I'm going to have, first they're going to be one times one. Outsides are going to give me a minus two cosine x. Insides are going to be the exact same thing. And last are going to be four, four cosine squared x. Okay. So it equals one. So we've created more terms. Thirteen. Okay. 
I want to clean up the right-hand side here because I can combine those two middle terms and make that minus 4 cosine x in the middle plus 4 cosine squared. Now, our point was we wanted to be able to change it all into sines or all into cosines. Which one should I change it into? Cosine. Why? Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a bunch of, in particular, I have this cosine in the middle here that is not squared. I'm not going to be able to change that one. It's not squared. So therefore, you need to get all the problem in cosine. So yes, I can change the sine squared here using identity number six. I can change yeah, it into. Uh, are you sure about that? Watch your signs. Your your positive and negative signs. Okay, now why did I put in parentheses? You have to distribute that four to both parts. You replace sine squared with a quantity, so the four distributes. So we actually have four minus four cosine squared. And okay, I got all this lovely stuff. Now, what do I, it's all cosines, what do we want to do? Set equal to zero, it's got to put something squared in it. You need to get it equal to zero, which side would be the smart side to put it on? Okay. <laughs> you want the right because you always want your cosine squared positive. You want your squared term positive. Have I not beat that into you about quadratics? Always the squared term positive. So that's, when I add that over, that's going to become eight cosine squared minus four cosines, and when I subtract four over, I'm going to have a minus three. So, okay, now we're down to quadratics. This is what you already know. Factor or formula? Factor. 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 Anybody got any explanation on this one? Okay, you're saying it'll go with two and four. All right, so if I go two and four. You want the one and the three? That's going to be six cosine and four cosine. That's not going to work. And if I go the other way with a 3 and a 1, that gives me 12 and 2. You would be correct. This one's not going to factor. <laughs> you were right. We should just have done the quadratic. So, the, okay. now, I had several people who had issues yesterday because they were forgetting that the formula is negative b. What does it mean when it says negative b? Take the b term and change its sign. So, if this is negative 4, b, negative b is positive 4. Change the sign. I had, I don't remember, somebody was with me during seminar about it, and it was just that they hadn't changed the sign. So then b squared is going to be 16 minus 4 times 8 times negative 3 all over 2 times 8. So you get some fairly good sized numbers here. 4 plus or minus, what's the inside? That's 96 plus 16. So that's going to be 112. Very good. Over 16. Now, do you need to break that 112 down? Yeah. You're going to put it in your calculator, so who cares if you break it down? That's not our final answer. That's just an intermediate number, so leave it that way. Don't bother to break them down. So. Okay, so what do you do once you have quadratic formula work? Should I do inverse cosine of that quadratic formula? No, you need to know the number value first. Particularly on cosine, you really don't want to do that. So I will be happy to tell you that when you do 4 plus 100 squared of 12, you get 0.911, rounded off, of course. But 
You need to ask yourself, is that a possible value? It can't close by an equal point. Yeah, that's under one, so it works. That also tells us it's a positive point nine one one, so that tells us that our angles are going to be first and fourth. Okay, how are we going to get the actual reference angle? <laughs> yeah, you would be doing inverse cosine of that point nine one one, whatever it was. And so, if you did inverse cosine of that, you would end up with twenty four point three. So your reference angle is 24.3, so no big deal. I'm still out of space. That means x could equal 24.3. Or if I do 360 minus 24.3, that would be 335.7, I believe. Am I done? That's it? No. Look at it. <laughs> You gotta do the minus. So okay, if you go back and you do the quadratic formula with the minus in it, you will get a negative point four one one. So that's going to be that's a possible value, but it's going to be opposite quadrant. Now when you inverse cosine it, do you want to inverse it with the negative on it? No. No, you don't because it's gonna give you a second quadrant answer. So reasons we'll learn on Friday. So it would actually it would be giving you the answer in this quadrant is what it would do. But it wouldn't be giving you'd have to then figure out the reference angle in order to figure out the other one. If you don't put the negative on it, it'll tell you it's sixty five point seven. And you said yesterday on the last one that you're not supposed to put the negative on it. It's, it's cosine, that's the one that'll really mess you up. Okay. Yeah. You have some situation where you have set up three functions to solve the equation. If you're talking about angles, if you're NASA and revolving, you're going to orbit the moon. You had an astronaut come out of your class here. Have I had it? NASA. I have had a student come out of my class who interned for NASA one summer. Oh, hey, whoa. Am I go out and help him? Yeah, yeah. 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 Somebody wants you to know how. Yeah, Otherwise, they wouldn't torture you with it. Okay, so meanwhile, doing my math here, 180 minus 65.7 is going to turn out to be 114.3. And 180 plus is going to end up being 245.7. Now, you might wish to tune in at this point. You aren't done. Why aren't you done? Anybody remember what you had to do at the end of the ultimate problems with the square root? Yeah, because if you, if you have squared both sides, if you square both sides, you have changed the positives and negatives to a positive. So you have often generated answers that don't work. And with the trig function one, it's pretty common to have some answers that don't work. Do we only have 30 in ultimate problems? Yeah, we don't have many. Okay, <laughs> now, when you check it, where do you check it? Yes, the original problem. The two sine plus two cosine equals one. Oh, whoops, thank you. I forgot all about that. Yikes. Yes, you do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two cosine plus two cosine equals one, and you're going to have to stick every angle in there and see if it comes out equal to one. It's actually not that bad, but um, actually, we're going to go ahead and check them real quick, and the video can, you can just see that we checked them when you look at the notes. So that way I can 